have Mad Hatters versus the Gents. We have the Mandarins versus the Merry Frawls. And the winners of the Gent Civil War, of course, will go on to place the Black Flight Squadron. I am, of course, Brick Harcastle. And with me here today, I have Leetonator of the Robin Dan Show. Hello, folks. This is a Robin Dan and a CE Sports dual stream today. We're a little light on the matches today. We have four today for you. So we decided that we're all just going to stream the same stuff and, and take things a little bit easier for the afternoon. Once again, it's Matt Hatters and Gents up first. The first map is going to be Canyon Ambush. We see the Gents streaming in right now, or rather the... Yeah, the gents. I, I keep thinking, oh, okay, gents versus gents. Wait, no, Mad Hatters versus gents. That's cool. <laughs> That's true. Um, once again, it looks like the Mad Hatters are Zucales. Um, of course, uh, <laughs> their uh, idiosyncratic leader, uh, Zuka, um, uh, a fixture of the Mad Hatters. Um, and what puts the mad in Mad Hatters, I would say. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, the uh, Manhattans are definitely very familiar with the gents. Obviously, they're in the same clan. And they have drawn each other quite a lot during the Sunday Rumble and Box Social events. Yeah, this is actually, according to Genocide in chat, this is actually the fourth week in a row that the gents and the Mad Hatters have faced each other first up here. For, for different tournament and match match combinations. Mm. Hang on a minute. There's a there's a twist in the tale here. It Zuka's playing on the gents. Yes, he is. Mm. He's playing alongside Feast on Thrones. I'm not actually sure where is Byron today. I, I, this is strange seeing these two teams compete and not have Byron here. It is, yeah, because, I mean, I, I, I associate Zuka so innately with the, uh, the Mad Hatters. I'm, I guess they just want to, uh, you know, to have a good fight amongst themselves. Whichever team wins, they want to have a, uh, a good chance of winning. Again, this, this shocks me, though. It's, I don't think I've ever actually seen the Gents team compete, the actual Gents team compete, without Byron Cavendish in the lead. He is not in this game. Yes, that's a very good point. Byron Cavendish uh, ducking out today. I think it's something to do with the Super Bowl or something. I, I, I don't know. You, you Americans and your oddly shaped footballs. Uh, anyway, in any event, uh, it looks like Zuka will have to fly alongside Feast on Thrones. I doubt this is going to be a big problem for him. They're, they're captains that know each other pretty well. Obviously, they've flown with each other. Why, Zuka, are you... What are you doing, Zuka? Zuka's just Zuka. I would like to point out Zuka's ship name, the Bricky Argonian Lido. <laughs> Why? Yes. Zuka. <laughs> oh, golly. Oh, Zuka, I don't. You... I, I don't even know what's going on anymore. He's a bearded little pixie. He is that one. We also oh, have dear. the Hatter's Omen, uh, testament, a tribute, if not to the Mad Hatter's team that the Feast on Throne, the uh, Hatter's Omen is going to be facing. Feast on Thrones captaining that. Uh, the Zuka loves walls, Madi Samo's Mobula, and the Zuka loves Maddie, Zingy Zoo's Junker. These teams at this point are just mocking each other, having a good time with everything they possibly can, including the ship names oh, at this point. Oh, I, I like to correct self at this point. Byron is, in fact, at a hockey net game. Uh, of course, you know, he, he's Canadian, so he's Canadian it up. Uh, well, that's reasonable, <laughs> as then. they do, yes. I'm sure he'd be very mad at me if I, if I said <laughs> it was something to do with American football when it was actually about hockey. Uh, yes, Canadians... Very proud, proud people. <laughs> we actually, this is this is odd, but we actually, us Americans are really starting to get into hockey here in the last ten years or so. Oh, I, really? I, I'm a big Chicago Blackhawks fan. Hockey's quite a visceral sport, isn't it? I, a lot of fighting in it. The hockey stick is actually the most deadly weapon on the planet right now. It's not <laughs> nuclear weapons; it is a hockey stick. Trust me, those things are dangerous. Mm. Right. 
Ah, here we go. Teams have readied up with the Bricky Erzonian Lido. Oh, where's Rob's name in that? I feel bad for Rob. <laughs> oh, I think Zuku is, is going to change at the last minute, but no, no more. We'll actually... Serious mode now, guys. Serious yeah, we business. need to focus now. Welcome to this <laughs> first matchup of the Saturday Box Social number three. First game is going to be on Canyon Ambush. Yes, uh, Canyon Ambush, a a game that really, uh, well, a map that really uh, exemplifies the gents and what they are. A very big match, lots of wide open uh, spaces. Um, yeah, the gents have that very snipey style, and so do the Mad Hatters, and I expect that's what we're going to see here. Anyway, on the Hatters Omen, piloted by Feast on Thrones, we have a Mercury top. We have Artemis Wings, and on the bottom deck, we have Gatling Mortar. On the Bricky Erzonian Leto, golly. Uh, on the right side, we have Gat Mortar. On the left side, we have uh, Hades Artemis, and on the front, we have another Artemis. On the Glory Hogger, piloted by Matizamo, we have on the wings, double Artemis. On the lower deck, we have a Gap Mortar combination. And in the center, we have a Hades. Number four slot, Zuka's machine. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> Zook, we're going to call it Zuka's machine for right now. It's Zuka's machine. Uh, it has a triple Artemis combo on the left-hand side of things. And on the right-hand side of things, we have a Gap Mortar setup. Both long-range and short-range available to both ships should they need it. Mm, yes. Uh, of course, um, the Zuka machine, the full name of that, is of course befitting of Zuka in that it's uh, disturbing, funny, and sexual at the same time. Anyway, um, it looks to me like the... Uh, oh god, I'm going to start getting confused now with Zuka flying on the gents and the <laughs> everything else. They've shaken it up for this one. They have thrown a co the uh, wrench in the proverbial cogs, if you will, mm -hmm. not to use not to use uh, 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 terminology. Not to reference our dearly departed cogs, of course. Oh no! Okay, so, gentlemen, uh -oh. ladies and gentlemen, each uh -oh. team has set up in their spawn. <laughs> I don't know if the glory hogger and, and Zuka's machine is going is moving at all, but <sighs> this could be a nice long sit match. <laughs> Okay. I feel the need to just write in chat. 28 minutes to go, guys! <laughs> this does have a time limit! Oh, God. Well, it's... Uh, both these teams are very patient. Um, the Mad Hatters, on the whole, I would... I mean, the gents, of course, their patience is legendary. Absolutely legendary. They will stay in the same place the entire map. And they will not move, and they will win uh, a lot of the time. It it definitely works for them. Um, both the teams, both teams are well practiced in long range tactics. They they especially the gents team itself can at times rival the mandarins in what we see right now for skill in using that long range tactics to their advantage. Absolutely. Um... I'd say the thing about the mandarins, though, is I think they're 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 just as comfortable short range dogfighting as they are long range. I mean, I think we've seen in recent weeks if people get really close to the gents, um, they 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 start getting unsure of um of how to deal with it. Sometimes using the Artemis for too long, uh, sort of a little tentative about um switching up things up from the plan. And it looks here like to me like the gents are staying perfectly still uh, in a predetermined point in the map. Really, uh, exactly what I'd expect. Um, it looks like the Mad Hatters are very tentative about uh, moving ahead. One thing we actually just saw, we, we just broadcast the Leviathan match earlier today. It was Mandarins versus the Mad Hatters. And one thing the Mad Hatters needed to contend with was on Sammy BT ship his brawl side he has started using the banshee carronade a lot more often we saw that a couple of weeks ago as well uh, it's it's worked out really effectively for him so far where he actually got ambushed the ducks team got ambushed on the labyrinth 
but they were able to switch around and use cover to their advantage while bringing the brawl sides to bear. And the Mad Hatters had a little bit of a tough time dealing with that. They lost the match, I believe, 5-2. Right, well, no shame in uh, losing to the Ducks, of course. Uh, Hatters Omen drifting very close to that uh, cliffside there. Guess, They're drifting uh... slightly. They're drifting slightly. <laughs> yes. A few inches why don't you, more. Why don't you take a look at what's going on in that ship? Hmm. Apparently there's something going on in this ship. Apparently there's something, yes. Um, well, oh, God. Feast Are on they going to leap off yes. or something? Feast on Thrones has ascended the smokestack to look inside uh, for the snowman. Uh, in case anyone didn't know, at the top of the smokestack, uh, if you zoom in on it there, at the top of the smokestack on the Mobula has a little snowman inside. Of course, God knows how a snowman uh, survives, um, even in room temp normal room temperature, of course, um, in a canyon like this, especially in a smokestack where, of course, they're belching out hot steam. Uh, oh my God, there's a snowman in there, you're right. <laughs> yes, this is, this is a magical fantasy world indeed. Yes, um, Feast on Thrones is truly fascinated by that snowman. He cannot take his eyes off it. See there, of course, his um, uh, his mustache, his monocle, his uh, top hat, the fitting of a gentleman. And now he gets back on the wheel. He <laughs> maybe he knows that we've been uh, observing his sh chicanery shenanigans. I, I would like to just welcome you all to this incredibly exciting, <laughs> intense matchup streamed both on <laughs> twitch.tv slash CE Sports and twitch.tv slash The Robin Dan Show. For CE Sports, it's Urza's perspective and his broadcast setup. And for The Robin Dan Show, it's Rob's perspective and his setup. Yes, and what a lot of action we have here. Uh, I can't take it all. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, but anyway. I, just, I need to take a sip of coffee here just to calm down. <laughs> Make sure it's decaf. Fuck no. Oh, oh wait, no. No way. no way. I need the energy. <laughs> anyway. Um, okay. Well, not a lot to comment on here. There is no <laughs> effectively nothing going on right now. Like it, It's hard to say that in some matches, even during the slower sniping ones, but there is nothing going on right now. I think you've met your Waterloo, Mr. Leesonator. You've lucked out until this point, but now you must suffer. Suffer like me and hers have. I've actually, I have been trained for situations like this. Oh, I see. I will not panic. <laughs> You've been training yourself by staring at a wall for half an hour then. I've been in some really slow baseball games that dro that just droned on for four to five hours. Oh dear. At least there's guns in this, which is a little more exciting. Glory Hogger, what are you doing? Okay, this is actually huh? interesting. Glory, Glory Hogger has slipped oh, above oh, the rock. There's an invisible oh, no. wall he caught on. Oh no. <laughs> this no. could be Glory bad. Hogger is stuck. He is stuck on the top of this rock. He can't seem to clear it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he's trying to turn, but he's he's taking balloon damage pretty severely. Oh, Massey, what have you done? <laughs> I, got, I have no words for this. <laughs> he's actually floating into the rock oh right now. Goodness. His balloon is entirely encompassed <laughs> in the rock. He is, oh no, he's trying to use kerosene to get himself. Oh, his balloon is down. He's taking armor. Here's oh the play my by play. God. <laughs> Armor's going down! Whole armor's down! He's taking perma hull! <laughs> He's kerosening, trying to get out of the mountain! I can't breathe! <laughs> I can't watch! This Glory is Hogger so painful to look at! Firmly into the rock, into the cliff! He's using moonshine now! He's desperate to get out of there! He's bouncing around! Armor's In down. his sheer boredom, Matizamo may have killed off his own ship. <laughs> oh my goodness! He's, he's reversing out of the rock face, but... He's gonna lose uh, his balloon again if he's not careful oh, here! He's, he's spun around! Oh, if the gents were a more aggressive team, they would have a huge advantage right now. 
If only they knew what the Mad Hatters were doing. Mad Hatters living up to their Oh, he got here. caught! He got caught on his way out! He is stuck! Oh my god, the balloon goes he down has again. ordered. It looks like he's ordered his crew to stop repairing at this point. No, they're bringing stuff back up. This is oh, just... No. Oh my god. The Suka machine firing on the Glory Hogger trying to dislodge him frantically. Maybe one of these balloon goes down again. He's blast tapping free. really... Oh, oh my no. god! <laughs> Oh my goodness! And the glory hogger goes down! The glory hogger is down! First kill of the game goes to geometry. That is the first suicide. <laughs> I think that that is the first unintentional suicide we have ever seen in Guns of Icarus competitive play. If only the gens team knew what was going on there, they they would have such a tough time trying to comprehend what happened. Oh my god. <laughs> right, well, uh, of course, this is, yep, history making here. As you see, um, no, no score has been awarded uh, to the gents, because of course, um, the kill is only awarded uh, when a ship goes down if the opposing team have done at least some damage to that ship, which of course they never did. I believe it's any form of damage, like a any kind of damage inflicted on a ship will then cause the uh, <laughs> kill to go to them, right? <laughs> well, yes. Well, if uh, if uh, Matty had to do that, it's better he did it then than later on <laughs> when he might have been caught by the gents. I, uh, I again, <laughs> no words describe what just happened. Well, there we there we have it. Um, we haven't seen a suicide in Guns Vicarus competitive play. Since Gilda uh, killed himself during uh, Cog Season 1, um, so he wouldn't give up a kill to the enemy team. And, of course, that, uh, that uh, has been patched since. But still, if no damage has been done on a ship, then it, it doesn't award the enemy team a kill. And I, 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 I guess that's fair. <laughs> it makes sense to me. It really does. I guess really it makes does. sense, yeah. And now, lo and behold... The Mad Hatters are actually moving forward, and maybe doing something. Oh, golly. They might actually be doing something. This is very exciting, guys. <laughs> this is why you carry mines to dislodge allies, says Kildra the Squid Slinger. Oh, that's, that's perfect! <laughs> that's perfect! <laughs> There you go. That's why BFS, that's why we like mines. They're, they're useful for a variety of things. Like hitting your friends. <laughs> yeah, like dis dislodging your friends. Dislodging your friends <laughs> from their lives. Yes, well, yeah, exactly. Dislodging them from this mortal coil often as not. Anyway, um, <laughs> the hat is only... Ever poetic, Brit. Ever yes, poetic. Yes, indeed. You, you, there's my Englishness coming out there. Anyway, the Brickia Zoni and Leto and the Hatter's Omen have barely moved an inch uh, this entire time. Oh god, now someone else is looking down the smokestack on the Hatter's Omen. Oh, but they, they better are get actually that. opening fire. <laughs> fire is Zuka's going Machine down. and Glory Hogger have <laughs> spotted the gents' ships, and we have had shots fired. Oh yes, yes indeed we do. Zuka Machine and the Glory Hogger have been spotted. Fires going down on the Glory Hogger. A tiny bit of cull damage, more hull damage to the Glory Hogger. The Brickia, Sony and Leto and the Hatter's Omen are prepared for him. Only just now have the spots gone down on the Gents team. Sustained fire on the Glory Hogger. One of the guns going down. Now, guns going down on the Brickia Zoni and Leto. Oh, but the Glory Hogger seems to be taking the worst of it as the armor is getting battered here. The balloon's taking heavy damage as well. The Glory Hogger has nowhere to go. The Glory Hogger has no cover. Now the armor's down on the Glory Hogger, taking permahull damage as Artemis is hooking in. Oh, he's gonna go down. Great he's arcs on that down. Artemis. Oh, the Glory Hogger trying to zone out the fire, going behind that canyon. Oh, no. He's just barely going to make it. Oh, Ooh. my goodness. He has not but a <laughs> sliver of permahull left. He barely made it behind that rock in time. And now Zuka's machine is all alone. Well, Zuka machine, luckily, being a junker, he'll be easily be able to curve himself behind that cover. 
And now, um, uh, to their advantage, at least, the Mad Hatters now have a kind of can attack the gents from uh, different angles. And now the gent, uh, the Mad Hatters, they do have cover they can exploit, whereas the uh, the gents do not. The difficulty for the Mad Hatters team, in my opinion, right now, is they are fighting on red soil, as one might say. This is the gent's spawn area. This is their territory. That They will spawn back in right on top of the Mad Hatters right, right now, should one of them go down. Do you know how they should, what they should do? Use, I think this is what they're doing actually, use the Junker to tank, uh, to absorb that fire, to tank that fire, because the Junker can easily pop back uh, behind that cover. The Mobula, however, cannot, and now the Mobula, the Glory Hogger getting fired upon. Oh, the Glory Hogger's trying to take cover, but a little tiny bit of him is exposed. Oh, it still has a wing outside this rock in firing arc Boom. as they pick it off. Oh dear. That, well, that's what I was saying. In this situation, you've exploited the junker. Hit. There you go. You see the junker popping back into cover, which the mobula cannot do. I would have liked to see a better flanking option taken advantage of if cloud cover would have allowed it by the Mad Hatters. That may have not been an option, though, in the first place. Cloud cover is sporadic at times here on Canyon Ambush. It generally fills canyons when it does come through, but that is sometimes few and far between in certain situations. <laughs> uh, Byron Cavendish saying, God, this is boring. Who came up with this tactic? Well, we all know who that is. Uh, I, I don't know <laughs> who that is, Byron. Do yeah. you? Some top hat wearing lunatic. Anyway. Oh, the Zuka, the Zuka machine here is uh, under heavy fire. Oh, he, he's reversing back, but there's no cover to find. He's going to bounce he's into gonna the hit wall rock here. There. Oh, he's got a little bit of color cover with that hill. But the, oh. I think the big problem is that he lost all of his momentum just charging into that rock. He's trying to hug the side of the mountain. All the brickier Zoni and Lido and Hatter. The, the, the he, hatter. He was um, trying to distract them. He was just trying to distract them so the Glory Hogger can come in. Now, the Glory Hogger is unspotted and he is firing down on the Brickia Zonian Leto. A lot of those Hades shots are missing, however. And now the Glory Hogger is getting focused down. The surprise attack doesn't seem to have worked. The flank was not far enough. He needed to come at them from a 90 degree angle compared to where the Zuka's, uh, Zuka's machine was. Mm, well, it's not just about angles, it, it's, it's also about timing those attacks. I mean, the Zuka taint machine was in no, no um, state to attack simultaneously with the Glory Hogger. However, the Brickia Zoni Leto has suffered heavy component damage. An attack right now would be very, uh, very poorly the timed. The Brickia Zoni Leto's arm has gone down! Yeah, this is exactly what I was worried about here. The Brigadier Zarni Lido, they lost a lot of components there, as you just mentioned. Their hull had a very large stack of fire on top of it. They were struggling to keep things together there, and oh, attack Zuka just machine. then, at a little more intensity, would have killed that Junker. Zuka Machine's taking heavy damage. Their arm was down. A little bit of perma hull was taken. The Bricky Zoni and Lito's taking damage as well. The Zuka Tape Machine taking heavy damage here. Only barely alive. Arm is down. Boom. Shaka Lord Hogger's in a lot of trouble now. They don't have something that can tank all that damage. They need to destroy the Brickier Zoni yes, Alito yeah. before all those guns point at him. Those next few shots have got to hit, and they've got to hit hard. They've got the fire on the hull there. The Brickier Zoni and Lito. The Brickier Zoni and Lito is doing heavy damage. Now's the time for the Glory Hogger to nail it before the Hatter's Omen can do any damage to him. Come on, Bricky. Come on, Glory Hogger. Now's your time to shine. Oh, and Glory Hogger is backed out. Glory Hogger missed his chance. He's Will also the still slightly in firing arc of the Brickier Zoni and Lido. If they just draw back... No, they're not. I'm sorry. Never mind. Trying to get a good angle on this. They are not in range. Hatter's Omen is actually getting really close. Oh, golly. Yes. Yes, he is. Again. But the Hatter's Omen backing off. The gents, true to form, being very conservative here. And the fact that Zuka is cap uh, captioning the Brickia Zoni and Leto has not changed that. 
I definitely think it's a good idea for, for them to play a little more conservatively with the Mobula specifically. It's It doesn't take damage very well. It's not a good tanking ship. Mm, not a good tanking ship. Not a good ship for ducking in and out of cover. Um, a good ship for evading vertically. But, oh, absolutely. Uh, mm, but when they're, they're sitting at the height ceiling and they've got a bunch of Artemises, um, yeah, going to be difficult. We actually, I, I remember, uh, well, I think it was a month or two ago, maybe about a month ago, we actually saw a Mobula do a very distinct, I'm not, I'm not sure which stream this was on either, but a Mobula do a very distinct vertical dodge of one of Redria's, or one of Redria's usual charge tactics. And it was just, it was absolutely beautifully done because the Mobula captain waited until one of the very last moments and then hit everything uh. to shoot them upwards as fast as possible. Hmm. Yes, indeed. Mobula, very good at vertical dodging. Uh, what isn't dodging right now, of course, is the Brickia Azolian Leto taking heavy component damage, eating a lot of those. Oh, my They're goodness. They're their engines. Brickia Azolian Leto is losing here. everything. Yes, they are a sticky... Oh, golly. Now the hull's on fire. A few more shots will do it for the Brickia Azolian Leto as they try They've and zone out the break. fire. Hatter's Omen coming forward, trying to block the Glory Hogger's shots. He's firing on the Glory Hogger. And they're unable to finish off. And now the Hatter's Omen. Gatling fire. Gatling mortar. But it's an awkward angle for the Hatter's Omen. And now the Hatter's Omen getting fired on. This is a really risky position for the Hatter's Omen. I know that Captain feels he needs to protect the mm. Junker. But he also needs I, to consider I, his own existence. I think he was worth it. It worked. He managed barely to save the Bricky Ozonian Leto. Gave him time to recover. Didn't take any hull damage either. That's pretty impressive. Mm hmm. I mean, it was an awkward engage, but it was never really meant to uh, <laughs> to kill the Glory Hugger, I think. Just put it off a bit. Just get its attention, at least for yeah, a few moments, indeed. and it did that very well. And now the Hatter's Omen uh, getting fired upon here. The Mobula the is map. probably the correct target if you're just trying to look at this as a basic ship setup, but the Br Bricky is already Lido. Oh, oh now the Hatter's Omen's We've had hull break on Hatter's Omen. Yes, we do. And we might have balloon break too soon. In fact, we might have ship break. Oh, but the Glory Hogger's armor's down as well. The Glory Hogger's taking heavy damage. Oh, my goodness. The Glory Hogger taking so much damage. They're going to they go down. There we go. All right. Well, there we go. With nine minutes remaining, I think. Yep, I think the gents have pretty much won this. Oh, but the Hatter's Omen's taking heavy damage, though. Their armor's down. Oh, what a great body block by the Brickia Zonian Leto. They're not using hard cover. They're using each other for cover. And it's that, working. I mean, that works. <laughs> that actually works some of the time. On our Wednesday match today, we saw uh, two Pyramidians actually trading off blocking for each other as they were under fire from two galleons. That's four heavy weapons pointed at you all at once. And they actually successfully traded off blows and came back to win that match. I believe that was five to three or five to four. Was that uh, Overwatch versus the the Waddling at all? Yes, Something yes, it was. right. Okay, yeah, I think I watched that. A very intense match too. Uh, mm. oh, actually, Oracle was one of the the guy casting with me. Did a great job with that. Oh yes, Oracle, Spirit, spirited caster as ever. And, uh, yes, the Waddling, very interesting style. Two Galleons. Have not seen that since, um, the, the old times when the Gents used to fly double, uh, double Galleon. Way back when Heavy Flak was very, very powerful. Well, in fact, it was overpowered. That was pretty much universally known, and that's why it was changed. Anyway, history <laughs> lesson over here. The Brickier the... Zoni Alito and Hatter Zoman are both sitting very low on permahole. It's reasonable for them to be conservative at this point because any seriously <laughs> risk situation is probably going to kill them off. I, I would suspect they'd be conservative in any event here. Um, because that is how historically they've always played. Hatter Zoman facing diagonally towards these canyons. I think it's almost as if they know. Um, that the Mad Hatter is going to try coming at them from another angle. Okay, Zuka, Zuka machines wide out in the open here. As soon as this cloud passes, passes by, the spots are going to go down. I like this flanking maneuver as long as they continue to use these clouds. Glory Hogger is oh, out of very cloud, nice. going out of cover. 
Oh, oh, wait, here we go. The gents have been spotted, but the Mad Hatters have not. Oh, they might be able to get right up close here. And the Hatter's Omen is still facing the wrong way. They don't know where they are. They've completely stuck on them. And now the Zuka Taint Machine, the Glory Hog are coming out of the clouds. The spot going down on the Zuka Taint Machine. But where's the fire? <laughs> Come on, guys. On there are shots, shots going out from the Glory Hogger and Zuka's machine on the Brick Yerzoni and Lido. Hades' shots are way oh, low from Brick the Glory Hogger, though. And That's bad Hatter's positioning. Omen. They've been taken completely by surprise here. Heavy damage to both ships. They're not even bothering to focus fire. They're trying to kill them both. Boom! There goes one. Hatter's Omen still up, but not for much longer, I think. This could turn into a nasty meat grind scenario for the yeah, gents. I, 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 I doubt it. I doubt it. I think they're going to wait uh, and then going to spawn together. Makes sense. Definitely. They, 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 they died way too close for each other to... Oh, hang on a minute. I say that. <laughs> There's Bricky Arzoni and Leto in full view of the Glory Hogger and the Zuka Taint Machine. But where's his ally? Not even trying to hide. Where's his ally? I was giving you, <laughs> I was giving you too much credit, Zuka. <laughs> What the heck? You thought they were going to do something smart. <laughs> Zuka, get out of there! <laughs> oh, the Hades shot's going down at the Bricky and Our Zoni names Lito. are on that ship. Don't abuse it. <laughs> You're representing us. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no! I gotta say, great shots with Bricky, Zoni, and Lido so far, but they have taken oh, a the lot of fire. damage. Oh, Oh, they got to get those engines up. they got to get out of there! Oh, oh no. Matt Hatter is the here! Armor's down. Hatter's Omen's here! What is God? The hat is over. It's too late. And now the hat is over. It's right. Oh my God! You're right. This has turned into a meat grind nightmare. <laughs> I, I don't want to say I saw it coming. <laughs> oh my goodness! The Zuka tape machine and the Glory Hogger focus far into the hat is over. Bring it, Oh my God! Back in as the soon jets. as the hatter's omen goes down. <laughs> the jets. Grand arm, the Brickyard's only Alito! The Brickyard's only Alito doing good damage on the Glory oh, Hogger good, with a death water! Oh my god! Now it's a one on one with the two junkers! If the Brickyard's only Alito can hold out just a little bit longer, his ally will respawn next to him, and this will be a victory for the gents! There we go, the hat is open to spawn! The Zuka machine has to kill the Brickyard's only Alito now! Bricky Zoni Lito has lost open. three of its guns and one of its engines. It's not in the best position in the world, but Glory Hogger is yep, miles it's away. It's over. The Hatter's Omen hooking in that fire on the Zuka machine. The Bricky Arsoni and Lito firing as well. And there we have it. A victory for the gents. My golly, I thought the gents had just thrown that one away by those spawns. But they managed to grab it back. Largely do, I feel, uh, to fighting in their spawn, spawn area. Absolutely. The position was definitely in the gents team's favor. The fact that they were able to spawn in so quickly hurt them for a moment there. They did get in a meat grind <laughs> scenario, which was shocking to both of us, I think. Yes. But it did happen. Oh, golly. Well, unexpected, definitely. Okay. I thought, I thought you'd be next. right there, too, as you correct me. I assume you said, like, yes, that makes sense. They're going to wait. <laughs> Oh, well, I guess I was wrong. <laughs> okay, well, uh, Battle on the Dunes now, I think. Oh, well, I'm glad that's not going to turn into a sniping match. No. <laughs> With these teams? Ah. Well, the good thing about Battle on the Dunes is that there's a lot less cover. So they're usually over uh, a bit quicker than those epic Canyon Ambush sniping matches. I, I love what Zinc Jeezy uh, said in uh, the CE Sports chat. 20 minutes of nothing followed by high-octane brawling. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Zuka's saying weird, perverted things now that I'm not going to um, repeat to the chat. We appreciate it. Oh, dear. Anyway. Yes, just uh, looking at the chat here. Thank you, everyone, for joining us, by the way, in chat, both in the, the twitch.tv slash CESports 
stream and on the Rob and Dan Show stream at twitch.tv slash the Rob and Dan Show. Appreciate you both joining us. Everyone joining us, in fact. Uh, we have, if you look on the CE Sports stream, that is Urza's perspective. And if you go over to the Rob and Dan Show Twitch feed, that is Rob's perspective with different separate uh, overlays for each. Yes, indeed. Um, I, I'm liking this whole um, working together of the Rob and Dan show and C Sports. I feel that our uh, competitive casting community right now is uh, strong as it's ever been. Uh, yes, okay, that's enough of the mutual appreciation society. Uh, <laughs> moving on. Um, yep, looks like we're going to see more junkers and mobulars here. Big surprise there. Attempting to update the metadata for our stream information right now. Hold <laughs> tight, guys. Well, while um, Leasonator fiddles with his data, I'm just going to take a quick look at the ships, see if they're even considering changing anything on their loadouts. We rarely see the de the gents change something up. Uh, I, honestly, I cannot think of the last time that they changed something between games in a single match. That's that's true. Um, the gents and the Mad Hatters both stick very very closely to that Junker Mobula build. You like to say I don't. I can remember one time when um, Feast brought out um, a galleon. He switched things up, but it was quite a long time ago. I feel the galleon's been sort of um, supplanted somewhat by the triple art junker and the mobula in terms of that hardcore sniping style. I mean, the galleon does have that firepower, but uh, in the long run, it's going to get outsniped by those disabling mercs and um, Artemises. I agree 100%. Uh, we aren't seeing any changes just yet from either team that I can see. That match did indeed end in a 5-4 <laughs> victory for the Gents. This is the second map of this matchup, Battle on the Dunes. This oh, is... God. <laughs> this is... Oh. The third map, by the way, if we have to go to it, is Parrot and Rumble, though. So that should be a bit more, a bit more exciting. For right. the time being, well... though, Battle on the Dunes. <laughs> uh, long range at its finest. Sniping in the most extreme of ways at times on this one. Much, much like where Northern Fjords can be a cover-based sniping match, this is a cloud-based sniping match. <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Leesonator, you know you're a Guns Vicarus caster now because Rethburn has started writing fan fiction about you in, <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> yes, Rethburn, <laughs> known for his uh, live stream fan fiction. Oh, looks like we're starting the game here. Happy days are here again. Rethburn is scaring me, for the record. Yeah, he's a bit of a weirdo. That's why he's in BFS. Anyway, moving on. Here we have, on the gents team, we have the Hatter's Omen, captained by Feast on Thrones. We have Merc Top, Artemis Wings, Gatling Mortar. That's it. Uh, we have the Urzi Letonian Brick, Junker, piloted by Zuka Ezrai. On the front, we have an Artemis. Left side, Art Hades. Right side, Gat Mortar. I gotta ask, where's where's Rob's ship? Huh? He <laughs> feels so left out right now. Glory Hogger is the next one up, piloted by Sailing Master Marizamo. We have on that ship a front Hades with a bottom deck Gat Mortar and a side Artemis on both wings. And on the Zuka's machine, we have on the right side a gap mortar, and the left side in front the Artemis, the triple Artemis combination. 
see a lot of shots exploding just short of the Hatter's Omen here. Uh, this is very long range sniping. Hatter's Omen backing off uh, probably wisely so they don't get focused as the Urzi Letonian Brick comes in from the side, still unspotted. Oh, Hatter's Omen might be pulling back a bit too far though. Careful they don't let Urzi Letonian Brick get uh, focused. I like what the Glory Hogger and the Zooka's Machine are doing right now. They are rising up in altitude, trying to make sure they hold a slight altitude advantage over the enemy team, no matter how they position themselves. Mm-hmm. Oh, the, the Glory Hogger. Yep, there we go. Now we've got the focus fire on the Urzi Letonian Brick. Hades shots are sailing well below where the Urzi Letonian Brick was sitting. Uh, we need to see more accurate Hades fire if this long range setup is going <laughs> to function for the blue team. Oh, Glory Hog has taken heavy damage here. Hull's on fire, kerosening to try and get away. Glory Hog are just, just running to the side, well, flying to the side here. Moving across his enemy's line of fire as fast as possible. That's as good a way to evade as any. Dodging yeah, right trying behind to go that cloud yeah, bank. They're go. going to be able to break cover, uh, break a spot rather. There's the, yep. there's the uh, shake on the spot. Mm, there we go. Take any permahull. Well, I think, yes, he has. He's taken a... Is that just my eyes playing tricks on me or has he taken a tiny, He's taken tiny a sliver? sliver, like mm. the tiniest of slivers of damage on permahull. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a more tiny sliver. Uh, except when my uncle uh, was getting pounded by uh, a galleon past a Farians a long time ago. That was the tiniest sliver I've ever seen. Having flashbacks? <laughs> yeah. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah, that was close. Anyway, yes. <laughs> That's why perhaps I shouldn't cast post-traumatic uh, stress syndrome. <laughs> Whenever I see lumberjacks hitting junkers. Anyway, um, the glory hogger and the Zooka machine hiding behind the not Leviathan. That's what I call it, because apparently it's not called the Leviathan. <laughs> but it is a blooming big um, uh, wreck of a ship. Sammy in chat is saying, look at ship build. I thought we already did. I didn't see anything yeah, uh, we, strange. We, we, we did do that, mate. I'm not, I'm not seeing anything weird with <laughs> ship build. I'm not sure what he was trying to alert our attention to. Hmm... I'm taking a look back over them all right now, and I... yeah. I'm not seeing anything odd or strange. Triple R for the Duke Machine. Um, Glory Hogger. Well, I mean, the difference, I suppose, the Glory Hogger has from the Hatter's Omen is that the Glory Hogger has the Hades, whereas the Hatter's Omen has the Merc. But that hasn't changed since last match. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I guess that's something that's worth discussing now that we've got a bit of a stalemate here. I do um, like the choice of the Merc in this situation. Normally, hmm. I'm, a such, I'm, I'm a such a fanboy of the Hades normally, but when it comes to this exceptionally long-range match, this uh, game rather, you need to have the ability to pinpoint at the furthest range possible, and you get that with the Merc. Yeah, that's true. I feel on the whole, the Merc is more useful. Uh, of course, also easy to hit with. More consistent... But, you know, the Hades, if you can get sort of medium-ish range and start hitting consistently with it, you know, it can be absolutely devastating. It can. Actually, one thing that I personally love to do when we are, like, I'm on a ship with a Hades and we're charging an opponent, I love to switch Greased into it and just unload the entire clip. If even two-thirds of them hit, all of a sudden, no outer hull. It ceases to exist and everything's on fire. Mm, well, yes, Hades is uh, as popular and strong a weapon as ever. Looks to me like the Glory Hogger is heading through the clouds towards these ribs. Are we having a Glow Water Thrall style massive flank? It's uh, Thrallstastic! <laughs> yes, indeed. I mean, the Glow Water Thralls, known for just these really epic sweeping flanking maneuvers where they just go around the corners of the map and flank the opposing team from both sides. But I don't know if it's anything quite that epic, because it looks to me that the, 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 the Zooka machine isn't straying too far away from the Glory Hogger. 
A chat is continuing to be very strange as we wait this one out between fights. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> there oh, there dear. are no words. <laughs> Papa Paradox. Great, you guys, we killed Brick. He can't breathe anymore. <laughs> oh, dear. Glory okay. Auger is using the wreck and the ribs here to slink in behind the Urzi Letonian Brick and the Hatter's Omen. <coughs> Brick, are you going to be okay, buddy? Yeah, I'll, I'll be okay. All right. Okay. This is this, yes. This isn't good. These these in jokes are going to uh, going to kill our uh, uh, burgeoning popularity, uh, <laughs> because when these videos are posted to YouTube, of course, no one will know what they said in the community chat, and I'm not going to tell them because it's filthy and obscene. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> uh, looks the like the Glory Hogger <laughs> has gone unnoticed as of yet by the Urzlatonian Brick and Hatter's Omen. They've pretty much sat in position to this whole time. Cloud Break is going to happen here shortly, though, on the ribs. And Glory Hogger might get noticed if they don't get to a cover position fast. Yes, indeed. The Glory Hogger. Oh, yes. The, the Glory Hogger doing some Metal Gear Solid stealth espionage action kind of stuff here. Ooh, try to go really low and hide behind that rib. And now they've spotted the Urzia uh, Letonian Brick and the Hatter's Omen. And they've got the cover of the ribs on top of that. The, the, uh, the gents. I feel um, they are, uh, they're where, well, yeah, the gents, I mean, they're, they're in the same spot as ever. But, uh, yes, again, it's the Mad Hatters who are the aggressors. Uh, this, this stands to reason. The Mad Hatters are a little more chaotic than the standard gents team we see. Uh, we've seen them take a little more advantage of aggressive actions compared to the very very defensive, excessively conservative gents team. Yes, definitely. Um, Hatter's Omen going low. Urzi Letonian Brick going high. No doubt wanting the advantage of uh, the Artemi. And now we wait. Who it's will stick hard. their head? It's, it's so hard to pinpoint exactly who has an advantage in this situation because... The, the the gents team, they have their setup good to go already. They've been sitting in the same spot. They have the prime defensive advantage. But the Mad Hatters have some cover available to them. They can duck mm. in and out of those at will pretty much. And the best part about it, the Glory Hogger actually has a vertical ascent they can do to duck in and out of cover, making it very easy for them. That seems to be the case, and it looks like the Hatter's Omen and the Earth's Detonian Brick are focused firing on the Glory Hogger. Oh, yes, very, very nice. Yes, the Glory Hogger can go down. The Zuka machine can go side to side. Yeah, definitely the Mad Hatters, I would say, on paper, have the advantage here. But are they going to uh, exploit it? Oh, high angle Artemis shots. Just Great eating. Artemis yeah. shots. That is hard to do. Absolutely. And the it's easier to fire those Artemis, well, those uh, Hades shots down uh, than it is to arc them up. It's that might just be the, the hardest <laughs> part. The hardest part of firing a Hades, in my opinion, is when you have a general idea of where the opponent is but you have no frame of reference example you're firing through clouds you have a spot thanks to one of your teammates on on a, a ship and you have to somehow pinpoint where that ship is through the clouds you have no frame of reference and therefore you do not know where you need to arc that hades shot <laughs> byron cavendish saying i hope the hades doesn't become the new meta i love it and i don't want to see eric nerf it guess what byron it already is the meta oh my gosh that's another hades shot Hooks into the Glory Hogger. The Glory Hogger is going down. The uh, the Permahull. Oh, it's been damaged. They're down to half. Permahull. Glory Hogger descent. Descent. They need the... to get out of there right now. Oh, golly. I think the captain might have stepped off the wheel there for a moment. Glory Hogger, for the love of God, descent. Oh, it's taking heavy damage. Great job by the Gents team there not targeting the balloon. Targeting the balloon oh, in that the... scenario would have 
instantly drops the glory hogger oh, down. Oh, the Tony and Brink's taking heavy damage as well. Oh, 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 got it. They've lost pretty much all their guns. Yep, Urzili, Tony and Brick's looking very weak right now. They've lost their ability to put pressure on the Glory Hogger. Oh, those, oh, those Hades shots just arcing over the Urzili, Tony and Brick. The difficulty of making those shots is the only thing saving the Urzili, Tony and Brick right now. Oh, but some are hooking in. The Gunner expertly judging the trajectory of the Urzili, Argoni and Brick as he arcs them around. Oh, with the Erzy Letonian bricks trying to fly behind this giant engine. This, this like is the problem of their of their position right now. That cover was really hard to get to. And even then, it is tiny compared to the ribs right now, which is much more substantial and has a lot more block points than than what this tiny little engine has available to it. Yes, a good point. Oh, but the Zuka tank machine is now getting focused. Oh, it looks like maybe the gents are getting a little bit more aggressive. Urzi, Tony, and Brick trying to go forward a bit. Maybe um, nullify the, uh, some of the cover advantage that the uh, ribs provide. Now the hat is Omen's taking the brunt. Oh, but the Glory Hogger's taking heavy damage too. Ooh. Glory Hogger just Goomba stomped his own ship, his own oh. teammate in the Zuka machine. Yeah, they, he just I... Goomba stomped his own teammate. Well, oh dear. And, uh, that means he can't descend fast enough to get the cover he needs. Oh, yeah, no, well, maybe he can. Just barely. He's pretty much got it. He's just kind of sticking his wing out right now, it looks like. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, there we go. I mean, Glory Hulk is taking sp sporadic fire. Nothing too substantial yet. Oh, now it looks like the Hatter's Omen is taking the focus fire. There's Hades shots arcing in. Most of them missing, but a few hitting. Oh, Zuka's team machine got caught on the pipe. They uh, have oh, lost their momentum. Oh, They're good, stuck where they good. are. Good, Hades volley on the Hatter's Omen. Several shots hitting in succession. Balloons on fire. Armor is down. But now I think Glory Harder went up. into emergency mode there as soon as Zuka's machine got stuck on that pipe. Oof. Yeah, that's true. That was well, that was incredibly risky for Zuka's machine. I don't think the captain on that ship knew exactly where the debris was. Great shots <laughs> though. Great Hades arcs from the Glory Hogger. That probably saved the Zuka's machine. Oof, well, yeah, the, the Hatter's Omen uh, took over half his uh, permahull there in one go. Yep, that's just what happens if you can just hit those Hades shots in quick succession. More Hades shots. Oh, one contact, a few contacting with the Urzi Ligonian Brick, uh, Lutonian Brick. Nothing substantial, though. Both Gen Sips are sitting pretty low on permahull. I'm not sure that's going to affect this engagement in the long run, but in the short term, it's going to mean the engineers on those ships need to be very careful as to when those hull go hulls go down. Well, the gents getting higher and higher, further and further away from that cover. Yep. The, yeah, they're getting so high now, they're finding it more and more difficult to hit with those Hades, are, are the Manhattas. It's, while it's easy to hit things slightly below you, or at level with a Hades, hitting something above you is a challenge. Hmm. It's simply too difficult at times to judge exactly where you need to have the arc lay out for a ship, especially if it's moving away from you while you're trying to fire that <laughs> yes because you're gonna have to you're gonna have to you know fire it up and predict how it's gonna arc down so it's kind of two calculations you've got to do in your brain and now some of these Hades shots are exploding short of their target yeah um the the gents are moving back the gents are pulling back to the bottom left corner of the map it looks like forcing the they're, uh they're trying to draw yeah. the, the uh, mad hatters out and it's working it looks like Well, maybe the Mad Hatters can take that engine uh, as the cover. Or maybe they're just luring... I don't know. 
Maybe they want to try and catch them in transition. I think because of how the engine there is shaped, oh, yes. it wouldn't be the best possible cover for them. Oh, Mad Hatter's all moving there out. There we go. They're catching them in transition. The Zuka Taint Machine taking heavy fire. A lot of component damage here on the Zuka Taint Machine. Hades hooking in. But the, Mad the Hatter's Omen taking heavy damage as well. Can the Zuka Machine take cover behind this gear here? Well, I think he's out of options at this point. He's lost his main engine, and he is directly in line of fire. He's bounced on the ground. But he's okay, though. He's okay. The Hatter's Omen, on the other hand, is only got a tiny shred of armor left. A few more shots. Oh, but they miss. Oh, but the Hatter's, the Hatter's Omen. Oh, armor. A few more shots will do it. But the Hades miss once again. Oh, that's the problem with a... The uh, the Hades not always consistent, Especially and now it looks like the, there we go another body block by the Ursi Lutonian break. Great tactic so far by the gents. The 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 Mad Hatters have been pursuing. Oh yes, look at this. Oh, Ursi Lutonian go break. Down. Boom. The Ursi Lutonian break made a subtle um a subtle air a subtle movement there that allowed him to fire downwards onto the uh, onto the Glory Hogger with those Artemi. Zuka's machine is taking a lot of damage right now. It's going to be under focus fire from both these ships. They are far. Zuka's machine is far away from where the blue spawn is going to bring his teammate back in. Yes, indeed. Well, are the gents. Uh, it looks like they are. Yes, the Urzi Lotonian brick. It, it just used those downward arcs of those Artemi and those Hades to take out the glory hogger now he's doing the same for the zuka tank machine there's no cover for him to get anymore there's nowhere for him to go can the gents quickly take out the zuka machine before the glory hogger gets back in it's going to be i think yeah I, I i think i think the zuka machine stays a numbered here i'm wondering why exactly the hatter's omen hasn't done more to try and get into arc they're essentially approaching the machine the engine directly i okay i see what they're doing this one around the far side there we go. Yeah, there's nowhere for the Zuka uh, tank, well, <laughs> machine to go. Yep, there we go. Now the Gatling's hooking in. The pretty impressive Whoa, surviving this hey, one. Oh, yes, the Glory Hogger's the glory coming hogger. in. That is Omen firing that Gatling down the Zuka machine. But yes, the gents weren't aggressive enough. Oh, oh, but maybe they will be able to kill the Zuka machine. The Gatling hooking in. But the Zuka machine taking cover. The Zuka machine Heather's is Omen has taken cover. a lot of damage in this, too. They've already lost one of their gun ports, and their balloon has taken shots. That's true. However, now the Glory Hog is all on its own, and its boon is down. Oh, a good volley of focus fire will be devastating for the Glory Hogger here. Oh, he might have saved yeah. his teammate, but he saved himself. Oh, oh this is a bad situation damage. for them. They could tap. Oh, they could tap. consistent, great Hades shots. They're crashing into the ground. The Zuka Taint Machine trying to block. Glory Hogger's going down. Eight dirt. He <laughs> died because he simply could not get his balloon and his outer hull back up fast enough. He died because he was trying to save his ally as well, I, I feel. The Zuka, well, the Zuka Machine, maybe... Um, uh, Oh, it may have been all for nothing here. The Zuka tank machine is go down. And with that third kill, the gents will have secured this match. There we have it. Cloud, I... although normally in that situation, a cloud would have shaken the spot and given some protection to the Zuka's oh. machine. It was on fire so much to a point where it actually was visible straight through the clouds. That's yeah. one of the risks when fighting a Hades. It will light you on fire and you will be visible. Ten minutes remaining. I don't think it, it, it's going to be possible for the, uh, for the Mad Hatters to get, the kills, to get free kills in ten minutes uh, at the pace this game has been going. I think it would behoove the gents to play defensively here, which I think they would do anyway. <laughs> so, Set the assumption. Uh... <laughs> Play defensively, gents. Way ahead of you. Oddly enough, they okay. have that plan in the playbook already. <laughs> ah, that's great minds we like. Take a quick look at the chat here. 
What is the Urzi left side? Is it one or two Hades? Asks Sammy BT. It is one. Yes. There we go. And nothing much else in the chat going on, but um, Seagull like squawks for mines. They might see mines later. Of course, the winner of this game going on to face BFS. Yeah, we're going to see mines there, I bet. I, I, I can only assume so. But it's a fair possibility. BFS, your your group part of the bully boys there. They've they've used mines relatively effectively, especially on maps such as Canyon Ambush in the past. I believe we watched one of those maps just last week. Ah uh, yes, uh, we've had we've had some success with the mines. Uh, we've I feel we've realised their limitations as well. Uh, <laughs> uh, it can be hard uh, to get close enough to actually use them, but they are brilliant defensive weapon, especially against uh, the charging close range Pyramidians, because you see they can't, they can't stop their forward momentum quickly enough, and they don't have the maneuverability to get out if you place them in a web of mines. I love what the, the Mad Hatters are doing right now. They are abusing cloud cover at this point. And I, I say abuse in the nicest way possible <laughs> because they're really using those mechanics to their advantage. There's a small chance they might get spotted here. No, they're not. No, they're not going to get spotted. Yes. But they're, they're really using cover and using clouds to their advantage to get around the side of the gents' ships. And they're going to be able to get a nice little ambush off on them. Hmm. Sammy BT noting that uh, the Erzi Lidonian brick is reminiscent of the Mandarin's style with that Artemis, Artemis, Hades trifecta. Yeah, I believe it's the exact same setup as Frogger's dancing feather. Yes, if I Frogger's remember correctly. Not Sammy's, because Sammy uses a carronade carousel. Yes, he started, he's uh, been using a carronade banshee nice. for the last couple weeks. Very, very canny build. Uh, when they are in a close range engagement, one has the gap more to killing power, one has the disabling power. Disable one, then go and focus fire the other. It's worked. <laughs> a fourth oracle in chat in game. <laughs> oh dear. Do not send uh, any speculations to that address. I, <laughs> I do not have a Gmail address under that name. Uh, <laughs> Whoever that got that Gmail address is going to be very confused later to, later today, <laughs> yes. especially when Breathburn starts mailing it. I wonder, <laughs> I wonder if there's actually someone in the world called Brick. Actually, there was. We did look up Brick Harcast on YouTube once, and there was this really weird-looking guy singing "Call Me Maybe" in this very deep voice uh, with this lots of sort of kaleidoscopic uh, lighting effects. That was very weird, especially because a lot of people started assuming it was me, and it definitely wasn't. Uh, <laughs> anyway, it uh, looks to me like the Hatters are hiding in these clouds. This is not the time to hide, Hatters! This is the time to attack! Attack! They time need to get their out. aggression on before the time limit hits, because as it stands, the gens are simply going to take this one. Yeah. I mean, look, don't look about me, guys! Shoot! Kill! Fight! Prevail! Scratch! Claw! <laughs> I, I'm Fight? shocked that they're just sitting here right now. <laughs> they need to hit this ambush off. They have a great angle to come in from, but they're just not taking advantage of it yet. Yep, there we go. Urs has just typed in chat five minutes till overtime. But they're barely moving. They've just got to go for it here. Look, I mean, the, uh, the gents have low permahulls. They could get lucky if they charged in right now and focus fired. Gents have had spots go down on both of the Mad Hatter ships and likewise on the Gents ships. Shots are being exchanged now. I get I get the feeling Mad Hatter's just they they didn't think they would get this far. I, I'm not sure if they just didn't plan for what happens when they needed to spring this ambush. They just want to try and get in position. But it, it's unfortunate that we see this right now because 
They had a great position on the gents. They just didn't take advantage of it. Uh, all the all the gents really need to do is just slowly back off and keep the uh, Mad Hatters pinned down. And yeah, it's pretty much over. An anticlimactic end. Yes, uh, Byron was noting that uh, since the 30 minute time limit rule was enacted, I think he was noting that uh, we'd yet to um, to reach it, but we are about to, it looks like. Oh, here we go though, the Zooka machine coming in as the Glory Hogger takes heavy damage. They're gonna go for it, they're gonna go for it, they realized it's all or nothing now. It's not optimal, but it's what <laughs> is the best they've got. Glory Hogger actually hatters. tossed kerosene in their engines for a moment to get a nice big burst of speed. Good choice. Yep, good choice. However, one of his engines is now down. That's going to make things awkward. Oh, yep, now the, the, oh, the armor's down on the Glory Hogger. Oh, shots connecting. Permahull's going down. That was so close. One more shot connected to Glory Hogger. We're going down, but uh, that might happen still. Oh, yep, there we go. The gents might just win a 5-0 victory here if the Glory Hogger goes down. The Zooka machine's coming in, but the Glory Hogger's got no cover to speak of, and he's under constant focus fire. The Zooka machine finally getting some good Artemis shots in on the Hatter's Omen, but they're not taking down any guns. They've got to work fast to save the Glory Hogger. Boom, the Glory Hogger's down. Now, Zooka Machine is in a two-on-one situation. I think this is almost certainly over. Great Merc shot there. Kill on that mobula over there, the Glory Hogger. Not a lot it could do at that point. They just didn't get charging in fast enough, and they didn't try to dodge enough of those shots. Well, there we go. The Permahull's down on the Zooka Machine. A lot of component damage. Engine's down. Guns are down. It's just waiting for the hammer to drop as the Gatling comes in and the armor's down and where's the mortar okay there we go there's anyway the <laughs> there's the mortar um well there we go uh top hats off to the gents and the mad hatters uh they did not go up to the 30 minute time limit they fought it out to the end which is a conservative careful considered win by the gents uh they are victorious in this series they will be going on to face BFS. Ah, well, smashing. Great well, I... <laughs> win there by the gents. They were able to take control of the entire the entire ship. The entire ship, wow. the entire game. <laughs> well, yes, they were able to take control of their ships, uh, use them to their max potential.